My house is full, but my field is empty. Y'all pray for me this morning. There is peace and contentment in my Father's house today. Lots of food.
we come here to honor the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, whose name is Jesus Christ. I hear the word of God say in Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other name. Salvation is not in Buddha's name, it's not in Muhammad's name, but there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. Amen. And I thank God that Apostle Paul said that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. How many believe tonight that he is Lord? Amen. If he is the Lord of all, then he's not Lord at all. And we thank God that we know that the only way into his kingdom today is repentance of sin. Hallelujah. Praise God. The baptism in water in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. Uh, the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God moves and gives utterance. Amen. So we praise God, amen, for knowing the plan of salvation. Before Brother Jason comes, amen, with his tribute, we're just going to go a different way here. Amen. This is for Pastor Morrow. Amen. Now, I've been knowing him not that very long, but I tell you what, I found him to be a very peculiar man. Amen. In a way, if a positive way. Amen. And as I come up here today and I heard this precious sister pinning so many good flowers on Brother Mar, it really made my heart feel good because everything that the sister said, amen, we already knew it. Amen. It's true because I have said, I said, Brother Moore with his vision, because the man's got a vision. Amen. And with his anointing and his knowledge of the road, he deserves to have a full house. Amen. But anyway, we know that God has got everything in divine order. And whether you know it or not, Pastor Mar, you have touched people's lives. They may not be here visibly, but you have touched their lives just being in the vicinity. And somewhere down the road, it's going to be presented to you by God himself. Amen. Many of souls have heard the gospel, hallelujah, that you preached. Uh, many of people have picked up the newspaper and seen the advertisement that you put out. Many of people have turned the television on uh, and seen the advertisement that's gone out over the air. And you know what I say tonight? Be encouraged, my brother. Amen. Because all is not lost. God still got people who love you. And Brother McCoy loves you tonight. Amen. That's why I'm here. That's why I slipped away from my church to be up here. I just could not let this pass. If you're having a birthday celebration, I wanted to be here. Amen. I'm not here because I have to be. I'm here because I want to be because I love the man that's sitting over there. And we come to pay tribute to you tonight. Amen. And there's not only the man of God, but I'm looking at the God of the man. Amen. The God of the man is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because you know a person like him will have to have God going with him to either want to be bothered. Amen. It was just almost an empty church. I know a lot of preachers would just close up and go home. Amen. A lot of preachers would say, why is it worth it? But I have seen this man go through adverse situations, people. I want you to hear this. Now, I have seen him go through literal hell, but I have never seen his faith drop. He would always look at me and say, Brother McCoy, God is still in control. And every time the devil tried to knock him down, he'll come back up looking for a building to worship God in. Amen. Now, I believe that's because it's the God of the man. Not just the man of God, but there is a spirit that lives down in this brother that motivates him, that activates him, that keeps him lit up in the spirit. Uh, hallelujah. And that's why we're here tonight. Amen. That's why we're here tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. To pay honor to such a man as this. Amen. And I thank God, amen, that um, I was chosen vessel to pay tribute to this man of God. 
Amen. But I'm going to give you my tribute just at the very closing. I'm going to be for two reasons. Amen. Well, some of you are going to be surprised, but I'm going to ordain the brother tonight. Amen. Oh, yeah, I'm going to ordain him tonight. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I have the license from Pennsylvania to do so. Amen. We're incorporated. We're chartered. All of that. Amen. Your papers, I don't have your papers. I want to get them properly stamped. But you're going to be ordained tonight. Amen. I'm going to give you a temporary card tonight. Amen, because the ministry of this man has got somebody might come up and want to be married. Huh? Right. Amen. And we know in God he doesn't need credentials. But because we have to obey the laws of the land, that's why we're going to bestow credentials upon him. You know what, Brother Moore? I am really honored that you chose me, amen, as sort of your overseer. Amen, to look out for you, to help you. I feel honored. Amen. I said, I feel honored tonight. And that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, God bless you. I know you have to go. We say the Lord bless you, sis. Real, real good. Amen. Keep praying for the pastor here. Amen. I'm going to bring Brother Akins, amen, just a little, in a little bit. I want you to leave your testimony. Amen. Whatever God lays on your heart to do. Then after that, then Brother Jason's going to come with his tribute, history, and then lastly, I'm coming back on the scene. Amen. So let's give God a clap praise. Amen. As Brother Akins come forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, what do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Well done, good and faithful servant. It ends the joy of the Lord. Well, now, what do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. It ends the joy of the Lord. Listen. Well, now, this is what I want my Lord to say. Oh, this is what I want my Lord to say. Well, now, well done, thy good and faithful servant. It ain't in the joy of the Lord. Well, now, what do you want the Lord to say? What do you want the Lord to say? Mm, well done, thy good and faithful servant. In the end of the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I had that praise in my mind all day today. What do I want the Lord to say? I want to hear the Lord tell me, Brother Akins, well done. Amen. Good and faithful servant. Amen. Come on in right. to the joy of the Lord. Amen. I saw you when you had your hard times. I know you fought a good fight, and you kept the faith. And my testimony tonight to the bishop, to the minister, soon to be minister, and to the few that came out, I honor the spirit of Christ tonight. I just say it's a privilege to be here tonight. And I want to thank the Lord for what he's been to my life. Thank the Lord for coming into my life. I thank him for saving me. I thank him for sanctifying me. I thank the Lord that he just cleaned up my life. I thank the Lord that he delivered me from cocaine and alcohol. Thank you, Jesus. You brothers just don't know the battle I had shooting drugs. And if you come from a city, you know what it's all about. You see people walk around with tracks up and down their arms and, and, and just strung out on cocaine. But I thank the Lord that he delivered me from that life. And I thank the Lord, Jesus, that he led me from this church to this church to this church, this church. In fact, they was calling me a church hopper. But the Bible tells me to work out your own salvation, ain't right? And the God was just taking me through, through different channels, but I thank God he led me to the bishop here. And I thank the Lord. My, tonight, my tribute to you, brother, Lord, Lord, the scripture of my heart to read to you if I can do this. Coming out of 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter and the ninth verse. This is a faithful saying, a word of all exception. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. Because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. 
These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth. Be thy example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading and exhortation to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy with the laying of hands by the presbytery. I think I said that right. Presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt save both thyself and them that hear thee. My brother, I just want to encourage you in your ministry. I know that this was nothing that just happened, that just so happened. I know God predestined everything. And, and I heard that somebody said there is no failure in Christ. And I know many of ministers who started out with nothing. And they just hung in there and they stuck it out and they stuck it out and looked around and they had, they had to move into a bigger building. So my brother, I want to encourage you tonight. I'm glad that Bishop Brown met with him tonight. I'm glad because I just, I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm enjoying this. There's only a few of us. But like you said, what the Lord said, there's two or three gathered in the midst. He'll be in the midst tonight. Hang on there, brother. The song says, I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Amen. 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 God bless you, Brother Aiken. Bro brother Aiken is our drug and alcohol minister. Amen. And our assembly, he's doing a swell job on Friday evenings at 6 o'clock. Amen. They have support group meetings down there. And I tell you, people are coming in. People are coming in, sharing and caring, crying out to the Lord. Amen. Because they're letting them know that there is hope without dope. Amen. Hallelujah. And we thank God tonight. Amen. For that. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Amen. His mercy endures forever. At this time, I'm going to have Brother Jason to come forth. Amen. That he may give his tribute to his pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm just happy once again to be here in the uh, house of prayer today. I'm very honored to be here today to uh, pay tribute to a great man of God, uh, Brother Charles Morrow, whom I've had the distinct pleasure of knowing for several years now. And I must say, throughout all that time, I never really began to live until I met the Lord at the altar, got down on my knees, hallelujah, repented of my sins, was baptized in water in Jesus' name, took on his name, and received the gift of the Holy Ghost. I will never, never, as long as I live, forget that it was just such an incredible experience, how the Spirit of God just, just floods your soul. You just feel like you're overflowing with so much love and joy and peace and happiness. And let me tell you something, Brother Aiken was speaking before about how the Lord, you know, delivers from drugs. Well, let me tell you something. The Lord will give you a better high than drugs. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He gives you a high that lasts longer. It lasts forever. Praise God. And it's a clean high. It's a clean high. And I thank and praise God for his salvation plan. And most of all, his gift of the Holy Ghost, which empowers us to live right Amen. and to do the right thing and to live holy before him because truly as saints of God we want to live to please our heavenly father and I certainly believe that it pleases the Lord that we give tribute and respect to those that are in the fivefold ministry the apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers and certainly, Brother Morrow fits the bill as being in that fivefold ministry because not only has he pastored, he's been an evangelist, he's been a teacher, and he's had a prophetic ministry. So he certainly fits the bill. And also an apostle because he's helped, well, he's founded churches with God's help, of course, that has brought people to know 
who Jesus Christ is and brought them in to thank you, Jesus, for the salvation plan. Okay, and um, speaking of scriptures that come to mind, I had a scripture that came to mind um, as I was putting together this tribute, and I was kind of going to save it till the end, but I just feel like I need to say it now because I'm sure there'll be people that'll be listening to this tape, watching this video that'll say, well, do you really need to honor your elders? Do you really need to honor your pastors? Is, is that scriptural? I mean, should you really do that? Or some people say, oh, it's cultish to do that. Well, when I was putting this together, um, I read my Bible every day, the bread of life. And um, I was reading in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. This is from the word of God. Amen. So if it's in the word, I believe it. I'm just crazy enough to believe it's true. Amen. <laughs> so I'll just move on right now. Um, I just want to give, first of all, just a, a short um, history, um, kind of just glossing over really quickly, um, you know, Brother Morrow's history involved in the ministry. And you'll be very surprised to hear this, that um, he started very young. The Lord wasn't kidding when he said, you're firstborn of mine, because um, he was the firstborn son, and the Lord took him at an early age. He was dedicated in a Jesus-named church in Connecticut, in a Jesus-named church. So truly, truly, this, this son of God came back home. He was dedicated in a Jesus-named church, and now he's the pastor of a Jesus-named church. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he was uh, raised in a small assembly of God. His family, you know, went to an assembly of God after that, believe it or not. And uh, he was filled with the Holy Ghost at six years old. Six years old, filled with the Holy Ghost, speak with other tongues. And this is an experience that even people that grow up in Pentecost don't necessarily experience at six. But he did. The Lord filled him. As soon as he was able to walk and talk, he was speaking in tongues too, magnifying God. And he was called to preach at the age of eight years old. Eight years old, he was called to preach. Amen. And this is even verified by his own mother. She wrote me a letter. I spoke to her on the phone. I know her well. And she told me that eight years old, he came to her and said, Mom, the Lord has called me to preach. And she said the Holy Ghost came over her so strong, she knew she wouldn't dare say, I don't think so. She wouldn't dare. She wouldn't dare. And I'm saying to myself, my Lord, eight years old, called to preach at eight? Who is he going to preach to? Eight years old? Well, at 12 years old, he started ministering to people his age and older. He started out as a children's evangelist with a clown ministry, traveling all over the place. A clown called Jiggle. G, no, it's J-I-G-G-I-L. Jesus is God and God is love. That's what it stood for. And this, was, this came out of his mind. Now, you're not going to tell me that the Lord didn't endow him with wisdom at a young age? How many 12-year-olds do you know who have a burden for souls to evangelize and minister and preach to people? He had a puppet, puppet uh, ministry, you know, where he'd have puppets, you know, to explain to children different Bible themes. And I'm saying to myself, my Lord, the first time I heard this, I have to admit, it was very incredible. But I believe it because age is not even an issue with the Lord. You know, remember in the book of Jeremiah, the first couple of verses where the Lord said he knew Jeremiah even before he was formed in his mother's womb. Okay? Before he was formed in his mother's womb. He said, I knew you, Jeremiah. And you can't say, oh, no, Lord, I'm too young. I'm too this. I'm too that. What are you saying? God can't do it? God can do anything. Amen? 
Amen. He can use an eight-year-old. He can fill a six-year-old with the Holy Ghost. He can use a 12-year-old in evangelism. And at 16 years old, he was already evangelizing on adult churches at 16 years old. Now, most 16-year-olds, even in church, are, the last thing they're thinking about is, oh, I want to preach. <laughs> I want to evangelize. They're too scared to witness half the time. And this brother is going out evangelizing, not only in Connecticut, but in Missouri. Okay? The Lord called him to Texas at 16 years old. He was called to go to Texas. Okay? And from there on, um, he joined the uh, Riverside Church of God in Texas which uh, from the many conversations I've had with Brother Moore, I know that uh, he was very blessed in that church. Uh, he was under the ministry of a great man who he admired very much and um, truly somebody that was really an elder to him in the Lord who really ministered to him and showed him what it really was to be a pastor. Yes. You know, so many times we don't appreciate what our pastors go through you know we don't see the sleepless nights that they go through worrying about some soul out there not just the saints in the church but the souls that are lost that they don't even know yet just people they've met on the street they've got a burden for and how many times we don't even see when when church service is over even before how many times the pastor's down on his knees praying seeking the face of god trying trying to Find out, Lord, what is it you would have for me today? How can I minister to your people? If you remember what Jesus said to Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. And the pastors, they're like the shepherds. You know, they're really like God's shepherds to us. And they have to feed us. If they love God, they're going to love his people. Amen? So that's how I feel about it. And I just... Really, when I was putting all this together, I just started looking at uh, how much of a great responsibility comes with this calling. And I said, my Lord, I said, I'm kind of glad in a way, you know, I'm not called to be a pastor because I'm telling you, I wouldn't want the job. It's hard. It's hard work. I mean, you, you got the business aspect of the church, the finances. Not to mention the spiritual aspect. And then you have to try and find a building. And then you have all these people who try to come against you, especially when you preach in Jesus' name. I mean, every, people just come out of the closet against you. You know, as long as you're preaching, you know, the, the standard, you know, Trinity doctrine and Father, Son, Holy Ghost baptism, they all love you. But the minute you preach Jesus' name baptism, they're, they're ready to, to eat you alive. And Brother Morrow grew up around the trinity movement assemblies of god that that's a trinity church and um the lord was really working on him because so many times we have a preconceived idea of what we're going to do and the lord says "Uh, -uh that's not what you're going to do and so was the case with brother morrow you think you grow up in a church and you're going to preach what that church teaches and god said no you're going to preach what I tell you to preach. Not what the Assembly of God preaches. Not what Church of God preaches. Not what the UPC preaches. What God says to preach. That's what you're going to preach. You're going to preach the word as is. You're not going to add anything. You're not going to take away. You're not going to interject. You're going to preach it as it is. And I thank and praise God that Brother Morrow obeyed the Lord and surrendered to the apostolic way Amen. because he preaches it just like it is just what it says and you know how many pastors today try to sugarcoat the truth they might know it but they won't tell you amen and I really do thank God that um, he was really able to minister to me when I was in a position where the Lord was really working on me and, you know, bringing me into the fullness. Because in this day and age, it's so easy to get wrapped up in other things. There are a lot of religions out there 
there are a lot of groups out there that preach all different kinds of off-the-wall doctrines, and it's easy to be lost. It really is. You could be sitting in a church pew and still be lost. But thank God, you know, we have the truth. And we should thank God every day. I, I know I, I do. I really do. If I can't thank God for anything else, it's for the truth of knowing that Jesus Christ is God. Hallelujah. Knowing he's God. He's the Father manifest in the flesh. And I have a pastor who's not afraid to preach it. Because you know in this day and age that uh, that's not a popular message. It never was. And anyway, um, what I would like to talk about also is um, the ministry that he had in New York. Uh, he had started um, what was called an apostolic learning center. And this was a new idea. This was original. Um, basically what it was was a Christian bookstore and library where we had people that could come in off the street, Christian or non-Christian, it didn't matter. We had tons of reference materials where if you really wanted to get into the Word of God and search it out for yourself, you could. And we made an environment where it didn't cost you a penny. It didn't cost you a penny. It was more of a ministry. It wasn't a business. You know what I'm saying? And I was so happy to be a part of that because that was a way to get out there and really get in with the people. You know, anybody could come off that street saying, I want to know about this. Can you tell me about it? Okay, praise God. You know, open up the Bible. Oh, you don't believe that Jesus' name baptism was practiced by the apostles? Oh, we got the uh, Strong's Concordance right here. You know, let's look it up. We've got Vine's Topical Bible. You know what I'm saying? It was such a great ministry. Brother Mar was able to reach out to backslidden Pentecostal brothers and sisters. He was able to lay hands on the sick right then and there, and they'd be healed. And through the learning center, he was able to evangelize many different churches throughout New York City. We've been in the Bronx, Brooklyn, I mean, my God, Staten Island, all over the place. And not just apostolic. There were Trinity Pentecostal churches. Some were black churches. Some were Hispanic, where they didn't even know English. He had to use an interpreter. And God moved. I mean, I have never, ever seen services like I have when he would preach at some of these churches. I mean, it would get to the point where there wasn't even any more preaching. People were just falling out in the aisles and dancing and shouting and screaming under the anointing. I mean, he would take out his anointing oil and pray for people right then and there. Boom! People fall and slain under the power of God. And me, myself, I'm sitting there with this other brother, and we're just weeping. All we could do is cry because it was so beautiful to watch the way the Lord was moving on people. The Lord was just ministering to everybody. Whatever problem you came in there with, he broke it and threw it away. He broke it and threw it away. You know, the anointing breaks the yoke. So it was destroyed. It was destroyed that night. And I thank and praise God, you know, that I can look back and look at those experiences and look at what's going on now here in Grove City and know, hey, Grove City, you're missing something here. You better get into this church. Because Brother Morrow has got something to offer. You know, we're not worshiping Brother Morrow. We're acknowledging him as a man of God who has power with God. Okay, that's what it's all about. Because if you're preaching the truth, the Lord is going to anoint the truth, first of all. And he's going to have signs following. He's going to have signs following. And this is a signs following ministry. The Lord does not anoint lies or liars. And I thank God that he has really placed his seal of approval on Brother Morrow. And I know that as long as he walks in the will of God and obeys God, there are going to be great things done here in Grove City. Great things are going to be done in Jesus' name. We're going to see people healed. We already have. We've seen people been baptized in Jesus' name. The Lord is working. The Lord is working. Amen. And one last thing I would like to say, um, when we were in Staten Island, I had never had any experience, you know, I heard things about deliverance and things like that, but I never really gave it any serious thought. Well, when we went to a particular church, um, there was a young woman 
who had been struggling with some, just some demonic forces for years. Years! And when she heard Brother Morris' five-minute anointed testimony, the Lord spoke to her and said, that's the one who's going to help you. That's the one. And do you know that woman came up to him after the service, and Brother Morrow prayed for her right then and there, boom! And the next thing you know, he started calling these spirits out, calling them out, calling them out, calling them out. We even went over to her house. This is how crazy Brother Morrow is. He believes if it's in the Word of God, if it's in the Word of God, you just do it. If you can cast out devils in Jesus' name, amen, you can do it by the power of the Holy Ghost. So we went over to that woman's house and praise God. Her house is clean. She is clean. And now she can serve God without worrying about the devil being on her back, giving her a hard case because through the power of the Holy Ghost, she was delivered. And this is what it's all about, people. We want pastors that walk in the power of God. We want pastors that know who they are in the Holy Ghost. And aren't afraid to exercise the authority they have in Jesus' name. And I do thank and praise God that I'm in a position where I've seen it. I've seen it. I know God is real. I know he's real. I know that healing is real. Deliverance is real. Salvation is real. Resurrection is real. And I just am just so happy to be here today because honestly... Um, you know, as long as people have been alive, nobody ever agrees on anything. But one thing we can all agree on here today is that Brother Morrow is a great man of God. He's been extremely blessed by the Lord. And I know that things right now, you know, may be a little hard. But you know what? If you're doing a work in Jesus' name, any labor you do in the Lord will not be in vain. Doesn't that what it's saying? His word? His word says that. Any labor you do in the Lord is not in vain. So that no matter what happens, I know that the Lord is going to triumph because we got the victory in him already. So I'm just going to thank and praise God today for the victory, because even though I may not see it now in the natural, in the spirit, it's there. And claim it in faith in Jesus name, in Jesus name, that we have the victory. And once again, Brother Mar, I just want to tell you, we love you. We appreciate you. I know we never tell pastors this enough. But really, we thank God for you every day. And I hope God richly blesses you and keeps you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Brother Jason. Amen for that timely history and tribute to your pastor. Amen. Uh, He was standing up there. Talking reminds me of Elder Benefield, amen, doing that. It's good that a pastor, every pastor needs a right arm. Amen. Somebody that's going to be there to hold them up because a whole lot of times you can be so discouraged, the devil would just try to push you down. Amen. I, I would like for you to pass these out to the people because we're going, I want you to follow along in this tribute to Pastor Morrow. Amen. We know God is good. Oh, yes. God is good. And he gave us pastors after his own heart. And aren't you glad he done that? To my friend, Pastor Moore, this is my tribute to you taken right from the word of God, as you can see. Now, I didn't add anything. I just brought it down more personal, amen, because we know at the time that the vision was given to John on the Isle of Patmos, amen, probably Grove City wasn't even thought of, amen, but see, God added on to the church, didn't he? And I'm going to make mine brief, but right to the point, because we want to read your scripture and then lay hands upon you. Make this clear, Brother Marl is a preacher already amen we're just going to license him amen been a preacher born a preacher ordained a prophet amen to my friend tribute to pastor Maul and to the pastor angel of the church in grove city these things says he that is holy he that is true 
He that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Now God is making this personal tonight for you, Pastor Moore. I know thy works. Amen. And we had a chuckle just before service. Uh, one thing you'll find out about Pastor Moore, you do not question his salvation or challenge it. Bup, 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 bup. <laughs> Don't you dare. God said, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Now, I know sometimes I feel like that all doors is closed against you. But God is saying, I have set before thee an open door. And what's so good about it? No carnal man can shut it. Amen. Even though they don't want to hear what you're preaching about, they don't want to hear your doctrine, they don't want to hear you talk about one God and Jesus is his name, the door that God has set before you, no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. Now, Brother Ma, I know that the cares of the ministry have somehow, sometimes weakened your body down. Huh? But you still got a little strength. Hallelujah. And, but you know why you got a little strength? Because read on this, it and has kept my word and has not denied my name. Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. Hallelujah. Because you have kept the word of the living God and you have not denied his name, the devil may have knocked you down, but he didn't knock you out. Huh? Hallelujah. I tell you, what a mighty God we serve. I tell you, this Holy Ghost will cause you to smile when you're going through hell and there's nothing to smile about. That. This Holy Ghost will cause you to run when there's nobody behind you chasing you. Oh, yes, he will. Hallelujah. But listen to this. It says, uh, for no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. See, a lot of folk have denied the name. But Brother Moore, this is especially, I know you're going to get something out of this for yourself. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews. The real Jew is one that has taken his name. Got his spirit on the inside. And are not, but do not. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Not you, but worship the Lord right where you're at. And to know that I have loved them. Listen, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, God says, I come quickly. Hold that fast with thy hands that no man take thy crown. Don't you let nobody take your crown. Amen. Because the crown is that that God has given you. Your crown is your anointing. Your crown is the oil of the... The crown is the oil of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Don't let no man take your crown from you. Through tribulation, stand anyway. Through sickness, stand. Through heartache, stand. Don't let no man take thy crown. Now, it's coming down to the live wire. Him that overcometh. Huh, that's what it's all about. You got to be an overcomer. Huh? See, a, a lot of people, they want to know God, in the, you know, in the fellowship, you know, in the power of his resurrection, but they don't want nothing to do with the fellowship of his suffering. Huh? Amen. He that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. <laughs> and we know his name tonight. And the name of the city of my God, which is now Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Amen. Lastly, God bless Brother Morrow in Jesus' name. And you know where I got that from? Because that's what he always said, God bless you in Jesus' name. Because he wants folk to know what God he's talking about. Yeah. See, when I say God, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. When I say God bless you, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. And know this, my brother, that you are, you will see, I have a little thing down at the bottom of my, 
uh, letter here says, I am a unit of eternity. You are a unit of eternity by the transformation of your Christ mind. Amen. I hear the Lord say, keep on looking up. Amen. Though the enemy try to buffet you, amen, you are going to be a victor and not a victim. Huh? Amen. At this time, amen, we're going to get ready to lay hands on Brother Ma and to ordain him, amen, to the gospel ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Brother Akers, you can come and stand right at my right side here. Amen. I know, Pastor, why you have me up here? Amen. You stand right there. Amen. God needs more workers in the vineyard. We're getting ready to ordain this precious brother in this commonwealth known as Pennsylvania. And as a duly ordained minister of the gospel myself have been for over 20 years now. Amen. Set up, amen, by the state to do so. Amen. We now enter into this grand occasion. I would ask you to come before me, stand before me in Jesus' name. Amen. Is this the oil? You got me. God bless. See, he's always prepared. Amen. He got the oil. And if you really want to be baptized, he'll find you some water. Hallelujah. See, that's the kind of preacher he is. Amen. Whatever you need, he'll get it for you. Amen. If you need a Bible, you go down that learning center. Amen. If you need a track, he got it. Hallelujah. If you need a tape about Jesus' name, he got it. Oh, yes, he got what you need. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, the fourth verse. The fourth chapter begins the first verse, rather. The word of God reads like this, my brother. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearance and his kingdom. Preach the word. In the word preach you find after the P reach. When you preach you reach. When you reach and you're preaching. Preach the word. Be instant in season, and that you are an out of season. Amen. I just hate to read this, but I got to read it. Reprove. You know how to do that. Rebuke. Lord, have mercy. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. <laughs> See, people don't want that doctrine. Amen. They said, some, somebody told me, said, I want you to preach at my church, but I don't want you to preach doctrine. I said, well, you don't want me to preach. Because doctrine is teaching. How can I preach without doctrine? For a brother more, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fable. See, people don't want the truth because the truth will cause you to line up. See, the truth will let a mirror down in front of you, let you see yourself exactly the way you are. So a lot of folks don't like to look at themselves, so they'll run away from the truth. And they'll go to these teachers that will lie to them and tell them they're pretty in their ugly sins. Um, I'll tell them it's all right to do this, it's all right to shack up, pack up, lay up, pay up, and all that kind of stuff. Amen. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, they shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Lord knows you're doing that. Do the work of the evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And there was ever a time that I have seen a man make a full proof of his ministry. Are you tonight, son? I, mean, I just want you to, if you could, to just kneel right here. Hallelujah, as we lay hands upon you. Just going to just pour some oil on your head. Hallelujah. I anoint thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you right now bringing your manservant to you, O oh God. We realize it in the word 
that the apostles ordained elders in every city. Amen. And we come in honor of your word uh, for this brother who has labored in the gospel and continue to labor in the gospel. We are laying hands of ordination upon him right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, by the authority that's given in Jesus' name. Uh, I charge you this night uh, to go forth uh, in the power uh, of the latter rain. Uh, I charge you this night uh, to go forth uh, in apostolic apostolic authority to preach to men, women, boys, and girls everywhere that Jesus Christ is Lord of all and that he is very God and very man. This charge I confer upon you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may arise. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Moore, by the power that's invested in me, amen, by God himself and the commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I now ordain you, amen, to the ministry of Jesus Christ in apostolic fashion. Amen. Continue in the word, son. Amen. Continue to go forth. Amen. If you have two or 2,200, go forth. As I know you will. In Jesus' name. This Pray for me. Amen. What glorious day Jesus came and made me whole. He completely satisfied my soul. Now as I face life's dark and stormy sea, I want my Lord to be satisfied with me. Thank you. 